Let there be light and there was light. I am Crime Queen. If you are joining us for the first time, this is the channel where we have fun with words and numbers. Numerology to be precise. Numerology and uh, spirituality, personal development, but it's all about uh, self-awareness and becoming self-conscious. Okay. Um, well, okay. And I'm just trying to choose from so many things to um, talk about. But um, so while I was getting ready, if you have um, watched me before, you would notice um, I often wear my hair down. And today I thought I'd just be a bit adventurous. And that is, um, well, it was not sort of even intending to be adventurous, but really doing something that I had not done before. So, of course, I have messed around with my hair like this before, but not um, to do a presentation in the way I have just done exactly like this. So, yes, today I thought I would do something new, do something that I had not done before. Now, there was something that happened as well. Um, I went to the park and had a walk and came back and I saw a dragonfly um, on the ground. And in my curiosity to find out with, whether it was still dead or alive, I held on to its wings and put it on my arm, on my hand and discovered that it, you know, it was very much alive crawled a little bit and flew off and I thought wow now that's amazing now I think all that this is really um, the intention of um, wanting to celebrate from I woke up this morning so if you have watched me for a while you you might have heard I mentioned that the 15th of May when Uranus enters the se um, second house of the zodiac sign which is Taurus that's my birthday However, um, for some time I came about this thing which we often say a birthday and then it becomes like it's really a year. You know, we celebrate our birthdays yearly. Now that did not make sense to me to say your birthday is once a year. Why are you using birthday instead of birth date? Like, of course, they would ask, what's your birth date? But then we celebrate the birth date as the birthday. So um, it was, I think, sometime last year um, I um, embarked on this um, curiosity and I googled the day. In fact, I knew for some time that I was born on a Friday, but I googled that again anyway. And uh, I decided I'm going to make every Friday my birthday. It's my birthday. So I'm going to celebrate every Friday as my birthday. Now, I must admit I'm not always conscious of this, um, but I try to be as mindful as um, possible. So, of course, nearing my birthday, which is to do with a dream I had as well. So in this dream, um, I'm asking this um, gentleman, which I won't um, um, go on too much about, but he's um, like he's giving me a message. And I'm saying to him, I'm asking him, are you sure you've got the right person? And he says, but isn't your birthday the 11th of May? And I said, no. He said, it is you. So I thought, well, what is happening on the 11th of May? What, um, what's the significance of 11th of May? And he was convinced that he had the right person in the dream. And of course, and I felt he had the right person, but why the 15th of May? Uh, the 11th of May. So when I checked the 11th of May, I saw that the 11th of May is really the Friday. So my birthday is not going to be on a Friday, the 15th of May. So the, the nearest to the birthday itself, of course, which every Friday is my birthday. So um, I thought, well, that's the message that was there to sort of remind me to celebrate this Friday in a very big way and I'm loving it. So having a dragonfly on my hand, being able to hold a dragonfly um, here, you know, in London, I, I just found that was really something special. It um, I, I um, relate um, dragonflies to wisdom. 
which is something I, <coughs> excuse me, I do ask for. Okay. And, um, okay, so um, that's, but um, back to the hairstyle. I um, took a couple pics because I thought, oh, I do like this. And of course, it's, um, I like the idea of now I have shaven one side of my head um, and it gives me that sense of, um, which coincides with the vision I had with the gentleman I just spoke about, but it's having um, the spirits, um, integrating the spirits in a way to create balance. How do we work with the spirits to create balance, which is what Mother Eve is all about. Mother Eve teaches us how to crawl on the ground, but also rise to the very top of um, having our kundalini um, activated and now that is just really wonderful and of course as in the um the vision was really about the spirits um that's an i probably probably will do uh, a presentation on that because i'm really one for visions and having i believe having the knack to understand um visions um and the messages they bring so um back to the hairstyle i keep going i'm doing i'm doing mother eve <laughs> i'm really doing mother eve so i took a couple pics and i thought oh my i really do look like my mother now my mother has been deceased for over 25 years thereabout and um and i'm thinking oh god you know i could really see um my mother in my features i could see see that and it makes me also um understand why it gives me the impression that all these significant um um spirits that we have encountered like our souls all those different souls are still part of who we are and so um and that was something i had very very um Claire from the time my mother passed is that I just felt, you know, she was just part of me. There was just this thing that she's still part of me. Uh, I'm still so all the nurturing and all the um, love and whatever it is, whether the what I liked or didn't like was all part of, um, was all there. It, it wasn't, um, it had not um, dissipated it was all there so I was then able to make the conscious decision of the things that I would want to um, give um, energy to or give um, life to in that in that sense so it's like uh, we were presented with that so back to the hairstyle <laughs> so I just thought yes doing this um, well, my mother didn't wear her hair like this, um, very conventional. Um, but um, yes, um, I just feel, um, of course, I'm feeling very complete like this because one of the things that was very um, significant of what came through for me was, and perhaps that's why I look like my mother, because as a teenager messing around with my hair, because I never really liked the way my, um, very rarely that I liked the way that people would style my hair. And so I was forever in the mirror trying to look um, how I wanted to. And it was very frustrating at times because, um, of course, the feedback or the comments from my mother inclusive would, would be... Um, you know oh look at that you know it, it does not you know, it does not look good or you know or even if it wasn't said verbally but there would be certain gestures that would be like well i don't quite approve of that you know um and now i am just feeling well i've come full circle i've come full circle to understanding and embracing that which was from a very young age, wanting to just liberate myself into doing exactly 
um, what I want to do with my hair. Now, I think it would be said that I have done this for, um, for many years, done exactly what I wanted to do. But for whatever reason that was, or what was the motivation behind whatever it seemed like, or um, did I cut my hair because someone really thought, you know, it was my way of rebelling because for many years I used to wear my hair very short like this, you know, very short, which I still very much like and I do admire um, the very short hair. And now I've got um, the polarities. So this is another way of me counterbalancing the polarities in my psyche and integrating um the 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 extremes if you like and finding that because where and and feeling where it sits with me uh or where i can feel one with one with all and um but it's funny that it should be in that kind of um um setting setting that's the word from mother eve this is the word we are working with now setting the word set which equals it like the um uh the um the symbol of infinity so it is in that sort of setting that i would now be seeing myself looking like my mother more than ever more than ever <laughs> than ever <laughs> like eve okay so we say that we, um i think the phrase is really meant to um take us to mother eve when we say ever always it takes us to mother eve so i am celebrating today my birthday and um with this birthday it's celebrating my uh, awareness to how to integrate the um what seems like extreme of um the short and long or um the have and not have the um in and out whatever polarities that life present us so i am really celebrating this and i wanted to use the word um okay so we have birth and day birth actually is 21 and day two i think is also 21 so uh let's get my brush okay okay so um so birthday of course is another in numerical value because we are doing numerical values here um we work with numerology so we have been talking about birth and day not birth date it's birthday okay now um so the b of course which i talk about the b as the beehive which is number 13 that's our incubator that's where everything goes into the, this is the beehive okay so um so this is two nine nine two eight so ten thirty let's well ten thirty this ten nine and nine eighteen and two twenty so it's thirty so this is three and day is four one seven four one seven i keep thinking there is something very very significant about four one seven in the um the music to do with the music but um okay it's every time i encounter it i think that way so this is 12 of course one plus two is three three plus three is six now that would be why we have we are using the word birthday because it coincides with number six the sixth day of creation and of course as we have learned we are the result of an experiment of six women yes okay now um because um all the days as well day are actually because we have six days um, but if said that the days which I thought were female are actually male, I'm going to have to um, go over this and night, which is 31 night, is meant to be the female. 
so the day is the male well that makes sense because the day is the sun and the night of course is eve the night is the female of course this is where the sun goes in we say the sun goes in okay it sounds like a very <laughs> yeah the mother and son it seemed to be more about mother and son somehow okay all right now um so when we add this we have six so six is really very symbolic here we can see how six is really um playing out beautifully here and we have five letters in the word birth and three letters in the word day so five plus three is eight now we count the number of letters because we think all these symbols have their place are uh, very significant that they are not there just by chance they are not there by chance and so that having a birthday is there is a setting a setting is being done on the birthday you can imagine a child comes from the womb and then it's into another world so when it gets into this other world it is setting or it comes out with everything that it has all that it has but it is um, to be set it's as if the environment the world is that is going to shape whatever it is it's going to help shape it so like i would say it's like baking a cake and then you put it in a certain tray whether it was a hot shape a square shape or triangular whatever it was then it takes that shape now that's what mother eve is really wanting to get us to pay attention to now i know i keep saying the same message more or less in different ways but I'm going through with it as Mother Eve is um, inspiring me to do in the sense of um, it's it's a crucial time. It's a crucial time for us to really, it's like reading a book uh, or even the Bible, for instance. I had read the Bible this for, for so many years and behold, according to Mother Eve, lo and behold one day something just opened up before my eyes that's the title of yan la van zan's book <laughs> something like that but one day something just opened up my eyes just opened and there it was a new thing so that's why mother eve is urging us to continue we next continue listening and observing and having this introspection because we just need to be open you don't know at the moment or the hour when something's just going to light up i think there's a scripture verse on that um you don't know the date or the day or the hour that the king or the lord god is going to come that's what it actually means so you don't know the day that um revelation is just going to be opened up to you wow um so um back to the hairstyle i keep saying back to the hairstyle so <laughs> i think i'm gonna call this one hairstyle <laughs> no not really um but well it kind of makes sense too but um we see with all of those um those teachings mother eve is giving us there was something crucial that i learned with this photograph and looking like my mother i still feel of all the daughters um that my mother well well it's four daughters four daughters but i feel that i look like her the most um i could really see um perhaps it's a it's a a seasonal thing because we all um tend to look like each other at different times so in this season i am feeling i could just see um my mother when i look in the mirror and what i learned from this is so crucial is that the, if i had not made a resolution with my mother whether on things that I agreed, things I did not agree, or things that I or or times there where I felt, that, oh, why, where were you to protect me? Or why didn't you tell me this? Or why didn't you tell me that? And all of those um, 
all of those um, ideas that come to mind, which I write in the, Crim the Crimson Light, A Bridge to Actualizing Self Love. Um, there's um, in that book, I really have this dialogue with my mother. It's um, that's my my true story. If I had not gone through this transformation and this um, the healing, what would it have been like for me looking in the mirror and thinking, oh, I look like my mother? What would I have made of this? This is a question I think is so crucial for many of us. And it doesn't mean whether you were just um, just fe a, a female, it male, female, it could be your father or, or brother or sibling or any or your colleague, you know, when people work together for a long while, they two start looking like each other because after work, they, they go to the pub or they have a drink or they have this, you are spending eight hours with someone, you know, sharing the same environment. You perhaps share your meals and, and have coffees together and, and all of those things. So there are lots of characteristics that you share or you have in common with that person hence why you are sharing that space with them in the first place so if we do not have that resolution what happens when we look in the mirror and see that which was once or uh, that which troubled us or that which is that thorn in our side so to speak or in our sight, <laughs> you know. Um, so I think this is a very crucial question for us to face. And if we do not do that, because hence why Mother Eve keeps calling us home, so we can have this um, dialogue with her. We can have this dialogue with her and say, you know, ask the questions you want the answers to. Why did you eat of the fruit? <laughs> she might, you know, if, if that's what you think you need to. Why um, did you see the fruit? What, what was about the fruit in the Garden of Eden that you saw was good? Um, how From whatever level you want to take these learnings to, have that dialogue with Mother Eve. Have that dialogue and understand because otherwise... We are going to be, which is why it is said we are born in sin. The sin is not having that dialogue. It's it, We were born in a scene like a movie, but we have been seen. Of course, there's the S-I-N, which is taken in consideration. Take into consideration that the S at the beginning of any word symbolizes the presence of Mother Eve. So in this case, yes, if it is said we were born in sin, I have got a couple um, videos on this. Yes, this is a sin, but here is the beginning, which is I and the end. So it's really her telling us, letting us know that the serpent here which is number one, which represents one, is actually beginning and end. Because the word beginning, like it says, in the beginning. So the word beginning equals nine. And the word, and the, sorry, the letter I equals nine, which is beginning as well. <laughs> beginning equals nine. And I equals nine, of course, N equals five. And the word end, the word end, E-N-D equals five. When we add this together, this is 14. But of course, this is 15. Now 15, one plus five is six. Now we can see here on the, on the template, um, do excuse me, because when I keep handling this, the, the letters, that's G, they keep erasing. Okay, let's hope you can make sense out of this. This is headquarters over here. Okay, so it's beginning and end, but here it takes us into the middle of the numerical values of number one to nine. 
number one to nine this is one there's one in the s so this is s as we are saying it's the word sacrifice so basically even in the word sacrifice we could say that there is a strong element of mother eve right there right there is telling us that the sack or the reef or the ice all consists of mother eve okay so here with number six because three fives are 15 of course one plus five is six that's what we got with the word sin right here so but isn't it funny that it is in the same column that we should get the term or the word new the same column here in the middle is the word new now it is new because when turned upside down it is m-e-n it is men so of course this is why they said men are sinners but it is really when you accept christ of course when we speak of christ here on this on youtube youtube channel on crime queen we are speaking of the having your kundalini activated or your pineal gland activated or your sixth sense activated or having this or your chakras all balanced having this awareness or mindfulness or consciousness so there we are talking about this new so basically it is really man turning himself inside out so getting to understand what how it is like being on the ground of course and climbing up the tree of life where you have your pineal gland um activated like it were with mother eve there is where mother eve ate of the fruit of the of good and evil not just that of course we have mother eve so it would mean that we ate of we have we are of the same dna of good and evil however now that's another thing because it was said that mother eve saw that the fruit was good now that would also mean that in actual fact the soaring well she saw it was good if you see something good if you only see good why should it be evil that these are questions we can really address mother eve with so however the um illusion of bad or, or, or um, evil or whatever it is that we have um, bought into of course we have not just bought into this accidentally this has been all about the programming the programming how we had been conditioned it, this had all been in the blessing even when we had the word bless because in the word bless has the word less even in the word breathed because in the word breathe it has it and it also has hate so there with the word breathed so to say that mother eve was the one who caused us to sin we would see by the time that it was said that god breathed in man's nostrils we in the nostrils which the with the word no with the word no also with which are uh, uh, streels or trails or however you want to put it when man when god breathed in man and there was i always say there's the word rat as well they mean in the rat is that which um eats um all these um waste and all all kinds of um rubbish or waste food and so on so the word breathed which i'm going to do uh another in or i will try and find the um collation of words um that i have done on the word breathed but it has in it heat meaning there's temperature in that word it has it it has et so there had there there was the past tense of eat in that word it has at meaning present there are so many words in there so it has the word hair it has the word air all those things were given to us in the or um, deposited in us with the word breathed so to say that mother eve who saw the fruit that it was good and ate it and gave to her husband was that made us sinners 
or bad or evil, we need to really rethink this um, story carefully. We need to rethink this story in a way that we can begin to make sense of our existence and our relationship most fundamentally with Mother Eve. So basically, it's really um, addressing the issues, coming to a place of understanding, new understanding, the word new, that we are not, this is where you are now, like one single cell, having to make your, come to the place of resolution with, with Mother Eve, and you are not because coming with the amen, that is the amen that you are agreeing with every other man and where you become plural, seeing yourself plural here, but no, you are coming to seeing yourself new. You are coming to see yourself new. So you would have left that sack, which is another, which is a six. You would have worked with the reef. You are working in the reef here. But remember, this is beginning here. There's an ice age, we could say, right here. The gypsy stage, the headquarters zone. I would urge again that you watch my video, an uh, introduction to Crime Queen YouTube channel 2018. That will tell you a lot more about this template, our very robust template, if I may say. So we've been calling on revelation. This is meant to be the word revelation and waters and transparency and transparency. Oh, transparency. Okay. And, um, well, transpire transparency. So we are calling, of course, Mother Eve is always here. We let us call on Father Adam as well, just to make sure that periodically we, um, at least periodically, we call and recognize the journey that Father Adam has taken us through um, up until now. Now it is uh, Mother Eve's um, turn to really have this new, Mother Eve is um, that, is she who helps us in this transition. She helps us pack and unpack. She helps us, um, um, in fact, she's the one who's giving us um, the induction of what we are meant to expect and the outcomes. So, um, of course, as I say, the, my main question as well, well, there are many questions here in this presentation. How would you look or how would you feel looking like your mother? Does it make you feel proud to look like your mother? Or do you accept, just accept looking like your mother? It's You don't have to um, put her on a pedestal or, uh, or anything like that if you don't really want to. But how comfortable are you to recognizing that the tree you come from, in or the egg you broke from, or the shell. But it's just like um, we all, or, or mothers are sentimental like that. They may save an item that you were very attached to when you were little and you grow up, uh, or it could be a photograph. So something you can um, associate with them. So what are you like when you see this thing? What are you like when you're close to it or you make contact with it? What are you like when you face your mother? That's the question. And of course, um, going through the um, presentation, let Mother Eve on your intuition guide you into the questions that are necessary for your own revolution. I was going to say amen, but it's a man. Say your name. That's what Mother Eve says. When you address, especially if you haven't for a while, it's like writing a letter. Do how you have your signature. Have something that she recognizes. Of course, she knows everything. But you're going to have something to anchor onto. So if it's, um, you know, like we say, Mother Eve. I, I Like, for instance, I always say Mother Eve. Um, I haven't heard um, anyone else um, continuing to have this um uh, this name or this way of addressing Mother Eve. So I say Mother Eve, so Mother Eve knows my voice uh, when, when I say Mother Eve because there's a, a an anchor. Um, I have developed an anchor on that 
for his with Mother Eve. And I did ask if it's okay for me to address uh, Mother Eve as Mother Eve and Mother Eve. Yes, of course. Okay. Now there is also another, um, which because we, we're talking about um, numerology and finding out because the first word Mother Eve spelled out, which is the word let, and it equals 10. So I also refer to Mother Eve as Spirit 10. As if Spirit 10 was her surname. Thank you for watching and let there be light and there was light.